of the things that I pointed out and we ended on last uh, Wednesday night was that Paul in speaking to Timothy says in the text train yourself depending upon uh, the translation I told you some translation says exercise yourself so based on that I need you to understand that it is a personal responsibility a personal responsibility to help us get clarity on um, our personal responsibility we're going to go to Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and it is here that the apostle Paul says therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now here's the part I need us to grasp. I'm going to focus on the last phrase of the verse where Paul says to Timothy, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The first thing we need to be clear on is that Paul says unto Timothy that he is to work out this particular aspect of salvation on his own. Everybody hear me? Now the question is, what aspect of salvation? So before we get into that, Look carefully at what he says. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Before we go into this, let's talk about what we know it does not mean. Okay? That's important. What we know it does not mean is that Paul is already talking to save people. So there's nothing for them to work out. Got me? He's already talking to Christians. Secondly, the issue of salvation is not work of man for God, but in essence, it is a work of God for man. Got me? So work that was already accomplished by Christ on the cross. Now the deal is that wipes out then that Paul is not telling Timothy that he needed to work for his salvation. The phrase work out, write it down in your notes. It is, is a translation from a Greek word which happens to mean to carry out to the goal. To carry out to the goal. To carry to its ultimate conclusion. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you an example of what Paul means when he says work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Let's make an assumption that everybody in here is in math class. You got me? And you have been given a math problem. The math problem is representative of your salvation. You got me? Now, an answer to your problem already exists. But you 
got to work at the problem to arrive at the what? Answer. That means you're not creating numbers. You've already been given the what? The problem. Am I making sense? So you, I, I'll stop back and say, a stu- this student has worked out the problem. Got me now? So that means if I'm giving you a man, what you got wrinkles in your forehead for? Yeah, you, 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 you they, they, they get up here. If, if I'm giving you the math problem, you have the responsibility to do what? Work it out. Well, you've been given what? Salvation. You got me? You have the task to work it out. I, 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 no, 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 no. See, I, I knew you would go to the math problem. <laughs> That's like saying then that, that don't take the math problem and, and try to line it all the way up with everything about salvation. All I want to borrow from it is the idea that you got to work out the math problem to get the answer. You are not, you don't sit down and create a problem. Just like you don't sit down and create what? Salvation. You are given salvation. You were given a math problem. You got me? You are already declared a student in the math class. But you got to work out the problem to arrive at the answer. There are hidden answers in each person's life when it comes to salvation. Everybody with me? And as a result of that, Paul says to Timothy, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The believer must first work out. This is the laser part of us now. What God in his grace is working in. Got me? See, a lot of Christians park at this point. I'm saved. I've accepted the Lord. Let's move on. Wrong. You sit in class with the math paper, with the math problem on your desk. You're going to flunk if you don't arrive at that. Do you hear what I'm saying? You're a student. you saved. But you got a responsibility to do something. Why y'all looking at me so strange? Anybody confused? All right, we well, all changed them facial expressions. They look like Friday night deals where you know it's like wow now see I, I didn't say do anything you, you are saved just like you are a student how, how, can, how can I give you an F if you weren't a student no 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 don't, don't. you are a student in the class so you are saved but you can be a student in class and flunk. You are saved and never be blessed with rewards and blessings on earth through Christ. You just say. That's, that, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Now, now you see, now you understand that you don't just want to be saved. You want to carry out what it is that the Lord says you need to carry out. All right, let, let me go a little further. We're going to go to Paul's writings in Romans chapter 4, verse 5. Now, the thing you got to clear in your mind is you cannot work for salvation. I don't care who you are. You don't work for salvation. Listen to what Paul says. 
but to him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. So you don't work for your salvation. See, a lot of people get hooked up to a church with the assumption that if I participate in a ministry, God ought to bless me. No. Because you are disconnected from him. You got to be born again. And if you're truly born again, you will render service. Let's go a little further. Paul's writings in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8, 9, and 10. Paul says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works least anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Let me stop right there. That means if you truly have the right relationship with him, he can work through you. And at the same time, you would have a thirst and a hunger to want to do things because you are saved. In other words... You need to become what he wants you to become. But if you look back 20 years from today and you're still the same person, there's no growth. You got me? Whew. No conflict. Okay. Now, no, none whatsoever. You are ne in neither case are you working for salvation. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you got me? The, the point is you got to work out the salvation that exists in you. He's not going to make me walk right. He's not going to make me do certain things. I've got to have a desire. As a result of that, I've got to be the one to say, I want you to feed me. I want to be taught by you. But he, he just ain't going to drop by your house and, and knock on your door and say, get your butt on up and come on. I mean, it just does. People make that strange assumption. You have a spiritual obligation to work out what he has placed within you. Now, now y'all got it? Okay. And if you don't, then you lie dormant. And there are a lot of believers, they can't figure out why they are on the same level they've been on for 10 years. Because they are not doing anything to work out their salvation. I'm going to give you some more steps in just a minute. So that was Ephesians. Oh, I didn't finish week. Yes, ma'am. Okay, no, don't, don't get confused with necessarily getting involved in a ministry. I'm, I'm speaking more or less taking what you hear on Sunday morning and feasting on it. See, that comes first because I'm a firm believer that before you hook up to a ministry, you, you, you need to be spiritually mature enough to handle whatever that responsibility is. You, you, you're with me? See, yes. That's, that, that, there are areas in each of our lives in here that the Holy Spirit desires to work on. L let, let me help you out. Some of us don't have no patience. Some of us lack in real clear understanding of what love is. You, you follow me? So here you jump up and get hooked to a ministry don't understand that it's not about how folk treat you, but how you grow to understand is how I respond. See, those are areas that I'm talking about. You, you, you with me? So I don't want y'all to start 
thinking just, I need to join a ministry. I need to go do this. No, no, no. I'm talking about personal. Nothing wrong with coming to church, but eat what you've been served. You, you follow me? At night, God, work on the areas that I'm short in. Show me where I'm not what I need to be. You, you see the difference? Then when you start growing, you, you can't sit still. You, it's, it's impossible because it's like a, a seed in you, and he's developing you into what he wants you to be. You got me? The last, one, the last verse says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. So the first principle of training is personal responsibility. Got me? And this is where most Christians flunk. They assume I'm saved, so this is it. And this is why Satan trips them up most of the time because they, they just park at that level. That's it. And, and they, don't, they don't realize. You, you have to develop a, 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 a daily devotional. You, you need to grow in your prayer life. But look at how many Christians accept Christ and sit on there, do nothing, and do nothing. And they can't understand why is all this happening. I mean, what am I doing wrong? What you're doing wrong is you haven't taken personal responsibility. I can, I can go even further. Maybe you'll get it like this. If all of us had water in our houses, soap, perfume, and cologne, just any kind you want it, you just name it. But until you get your behind in the tub, the dirt going to stay on you. Now, do, do you, you get, see, it's funny. We take responsibility for what we want. You got me? But when it comes spiritually, we, we, we figure we've arrived. And what I'm trying to teach us is when Paul said to Timothy, train yourself. He says the first requirement is personal responsibility. Nobody going to make you come to church. Nobody's going to make you read your Bible. Nobody's going to make you pray. Those are things you have to grow and want to do. You, you got me? And I'm so far ahead of myself. Sometimes trouble will bring you down to your knees. You got me? To the point to where you can't figure out what's, what am I doing wrong. He trying to get your attention. That you got to take on some personal responsibility. Everybody got it? That's number what? One. That's number one. The second principle involved in Paul telling Timothy to train yourself is that the object of this training is growth. Okay, all you got to write down is growth. That's, that's the deal. Whenever you take on personal responsibility, your objective is to grow. The growth that Paul was saying to Timothy involved Timothy's personal life. Got me? Why is that important? Because Paul couldn't grow for Timothy. <laughs> now, show you how important what Paul is saying to Timothy is earlier Paul had told Timothy to prosper in his ministry. This time he comes back and says, but I need you to grow personally as a person. You got me? See, 
Sometimes there's a mismatch in that ministry can prosper and the person dealing with it is an infant. You know, got me? See, you, the large church, thirsty and hungry people involved in ministries. There's no indication that leadership is growing. <laughs> you, 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 y'all see what I'm saying? So Paul comes back to Timothy and says, I do not want you just to grow in your ministry. I want you to grow personally in your relationship with whom? With God. How can this take place? He needed to conduct himself in personal devotion. All right? Yes, sir. All right, now here, here's the thing. I say this Sunday after Sunday I'm, I'm, when I'm up teaching and Brother Shelley says it. We can't give you an appetite. All a chef can do is cook the food and try to the very best to make sure it smells good and tastes good. But until you taste it, you'll never experience it. So when we start talking about uh, the idea of, of growth, you got to do things personally to help yourself. See, l- l- let me ask you this. How many of you all on a daily basis find yourself talking to God? Okay. Well, see, but what you got to be careful of is that you don't want to get caught just talking to God about stuff. You know, like you shopping at Walmart. You want to talk to God about you. Such as, God, help me become the person you want me to be. This is what Paul was emphasizing to Timothy. How can I do it? You could do it through personal devotion. You don't need to wait till you get to church, okay? Mm. Yeah, because you have developed, uh, you have not become content not being there. So that tells you got a connection somewhere, a strong one. Because if, if, if nobody has to tell you you need to be here and you hear him say that, you're growing. Because there are a whole lot of saints don't hear nothing. And, and the reason, it's not because he's not speaking, but they have turned such a deaf ear to the voice of God that they're moving on their own fleshly desires. Bad. Well. Yes. Yeah. And see, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say to come not just to be coming because that's just being here. You, you want to come and reap what God got in store. And that goes to, all right, once we get in here, you, you have to say to yourself, which I don't have to say that, you know, you let loose over there in a minute. But, but you, you have to say, I, I, I want to worship him. You, you know, I, I don't care what the rest of y'all came in here for. I've got to worship him because I miss being in his presence. You, when those types of things Start, you are developing an appetite, you know. So a lot of our members don't have appetites at all. That's why they can spot worship just every, every now and then. But now they, they, when they get in trouble, when, when they get in trouble, then, then you, you ain't got to ask no question. They run in. But see, they don't understand. God doesn't like that because then you're using God like you do Walgreens. I, d- I discovered I got a problem, so let me go and get a prescription for it. And he was saying, if you had been what you supposed to have been all along, I never would have had to write a prescription for you. But the game was your hand going up. Okay. 
Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, <laughs> you see, you, you hitting bullseye. Y'all are in here. You're in here. So you, you, are, you are at Bible study, okay? The, the point is, look at how many of our members do not study the word, but they want answers to their problems. Well, you wouldn't have had the problem if you had come to Bible study. And then they're only searching for an answer, not the reason for the problem. <laughs> you see the difference? Okay. So despite the fact that Timothy was an experienced, well-qualified Christian minister, he needed to grow. Let me say that again. Because sometimes we arrive at a level and we think, well, I've made it. And that's why sometimes when you hear me teaching, I'll have to say, I don't know about y'all, I have to talk about myself. I know what I must do to maintain myself with him. I don't know what you all have to do. I know what I have to do. I have to have constant communication with him. Okay, I have to see and know without a doubt throughout the day I can go back and forth talking to him. I don't need to always be at the altar with my hands folded. Nope, I've gotten past that. I can just sit at my desk and, and be in fellowship with him. So Paul is teaching us that Timothy, despite being a preacher, needed to do what? Grow. Now, if he saw that, how much more should we as believers sitting here take on the same thing? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You messing with me? You you know you messing with me tonight. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say something. What you just I, I I appreciate you have said that to me from day one that you called and said. In essence, is it all right if I come back home? And I said, yes. I had no problem with that at all. But look at how many don't think that way. See, that's the tragedy. That, that's, 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 that, that's the tragedy. Reverend Jones down here made a statement in men's ministry meeting and uh, made it very clear. Several preachers were in there trying to get them to understand you ain't the pastor New Horizon. Yeah, that's right. Paul is. That's right. Y'all Amen. Amen. be surprised how preachers get off track because they don't understand. It's just like your children. They are your children. They ain't the parent. That's right. That's right. That's right. Big difference. I don't care how close you are, they'll never be the parent. It's going to be you the parent. And we don't want that kind of teaching. Because we, in our minds, we are ready to go find a church. And, 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 and us as a race of people, I have stood here and said when they call, get called to preach, y'all leave them alone. Have I not said that to us? Can, can I tell you why that's so important? Because we are sent them out in the midst of wolves, and some of y'all are called the wolves loose on them. All right. 
So, Timothy needed to grow in the fear of God, the comprehension of the love of God, his desire for the presence and fellowship of God. See, when, when you get that kind of a thirst that you got to be where God wants you to be. I, I can't just, I'm miserable missing Sunday. I'm miserable when I don't have Bible study. I'm miserable when I can't talk to God throughout the week. I'm lost. I got to, I got to get in my car sometime and just say, God is just, I turn the, my music on. God, I thank you. You've been so good. And before I realize it, I don't got crazy in the car. All right, all right. So this means every Christian is to grow spiritually. Every Christian is to grow spiritually. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. So why don't you? I don't do that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do know why you don't get up. You don't answer yourself. And I'm glad to hear you say that. See, I sense that in preaching. You don't get up because you are either thinking of what other folk will say. You looking at what other folk, gonna, how they're going to look at you. You, you can't. You, it, that's like saying I would eat the greens and the chicken and the cornbread and all, but they looking at me. Who hungry? You or them? It's the same concept. Spiritually, you have to do what God has laid on your heart to do and not worry about other folk. But I know Satan is speaking to people, telling them don't get up. Don't, don't, don't say nothing. Don't, you know. And so we get comfortable just being in here. But being at the table doesn't mean you're eating. You're just at the table. Now you not, boy, I'm so glad you said that. So now you understand what I'm saying? You got to be more than just at worship. You got to be a worshiper. When you say, uh, what you mean? I'm, I'm lost when you say drag her out. Oh, because she won't move? Oh, yeah. No, no it's, 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 no, it's all right. That, 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 that's just because, that's what they're supposed to do, Sister Powell, is to get up and interact with, with other people. Now, I thought you were getting ready to go somewhere that I... No, 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 no. No, no, no. Listen, listen to me. L listen, listen, listen to me. I did, it, I did it Sunday, and I'm surprised nobody really caught on. I'm surprised. The choir might have seen it because they were facing people in the audience never knew. But I have a problem when I know something, and you go out the door, and you're on the porch... And you cry. That ain't the place to be. I'm just telling you up front. That, that ain't the place to be. If you come in this door. And you know you walked in with a problem. I have a problem. When, when we escort folk on the outside. Cool them. What you cooling them off for? Come on now. I, I, need, I need you to understand. The answer to your problem. Is on the inside. But that's the way we as a race of people have dealt with praise and worship. You know, if you hurt yourself, you weren't shouting right. I'm, now that's, not, yeah. I mean, because God ain't going to allow you to cut yourself and do all that kind of stuff. And then if you do fall, you're going to get right back up and keep moving. All right. All right. So, whoo. Let me take you. Spiritual growth is critical. Yes, sir. Spiritual growth is critical. 
It is so critical. It involves three things. I'm going to take you to a passage of scripture and then give you those three things. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 1. Okay, in this passage of scripture, Moses speaks to Israel because they had established a covenant with God and they needed to do three things. It's in the text, watch this. And Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today. You should already see one. Then he says that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. Got three things in the text. Hearing, learning, and that word observe means following. Don't get them out of order. You see it? By them entering into covenant with God, he had commanded them. That's so important. Now, I'm going to take us back to worship. When you don't hear, you can't worship. Because the gist of growing hangs on the hinges of your hearing. Stay with me now. I'm responsible to a certain degree how you hear. I hope I'm making sense to y'all now. Everybody got me? How am I responsible? In how I prepare and serve. Okay? Somebody came to me Sunday and said, I had an opportunity sitting on the pew to notice something. And I said, okay, what did you notice? <laughs> you got people who take notes at your church. I said, yes, that's a good thing. I mean, to me, that's important. But you got to take what's on the paper. That's the key. See, good notes and no growth won't help you. So Moses says to them, the very first word, hearing. So here's where the action, he says, you must hear and put into practice. That's learning. See, the whole objective in coming to worship is to hear so that you can learn and better follow. <laughs> but we can't follow because we are not learning and we are not learning because we're not hearing. I don't have no problem with a good shout. Love one. I'll shout any of y'all in here. But I can't get up every Sunday hooping and a hollering and a screaming because you're not going to hear well. All right, that's right. All right. You're just not going to hear. Okay? And then if you do hear, you're going to pick what you think you need to hear. And it's going to only be that part that's going to make you feel good. <laughs> All right. So he gives us those three things. First, let me talk about the idea of hearing. Hearing is absorbing and accepting information about God. We don't grow because as a race of people, we don't hear. Okay? 
Listen to Paul in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I'm up and there is, let, let, let me start, let me start with life application. Okay? If you do not hear him, you are not going to understand nothing. Satan has gotten us hooked on not hearing. That's why, that's why as a race of people, we, we get emotionally caught up with no substance. Because we, we don't hear. If we can get to the point of just really hearing, we'd be off chain. So because of that, as preachers, sometimes lack of preparation is easy to present. Why? You ain't listening anyway. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Now, you didn't learn it. You heard it. You heard it. Once you hear it, you take it home. And you start praying and talking to God on those notes. And you said, I, I want to do that. G God, help me. Help me. You, you're, it's, I'm going back to, I hope, I hope everybody had dinner. Because if not, when you finish tonight, we'll be hungry. If I put a full course meal on your plate, it's on your plate. You see the food. You know what it is. You smell it. Learning how it tastes means you got to take the fork. Pick it up and put it in your mouth. We don't ever do that with our notes. Got me? That, that's the point. That's the point. See, you... you you got to. If you intend to grow and become what God wants you to be, one of the first things that the Holy Spirit worked on me on was, was numbers. And I'm as serious as I can be. I don't ask nobody no more. Y'all have, I might say, uh, Bible study Wednesday night, that's it. See, I'm not going to beg you to the table anymore. You, you, you got to have a hunger and a desire to want to come to the table. Because if you don't have the desire, nothing I can do to help you. <sighs> learning. We talked on hearing, learning. Learning is understanding its meaning and implication. That's, that's, that's not quoting, learning. If we're going to grow, we have to grow through hearing and learning. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. You can ask the average person who goes into a church, did you understand the message? They didn't. How, how are you going to understand you didn't write down the text? That means you didn't know the book. You didn't know the chapter. You didn't know the verses. Didn't even know who he talked about or she talked about. But you are know and say, but they preach that thing. <laughs> preach what thing? Now y'all understand? See, Satan... Ain't, ain't mad because you, you, you came. He gets angry when you feast off what you have heard. That book are mad now because he, he can't touch you in certain areas. He got to go back to the drawing board. He, he's angry now that y'all sitting here. But he ain't that mad. He gets mad when application is placed in your life. Got me? 
So guess where he messed with most Christians at? Their hearing. He turned their hearing down. See, if you sit beside a person and this person wants to talk and gossip, the person sitting there can go get up and say, girl, I was in church and so-and-so told me about so-and-so, so-and-so. They can tell you all the details of what that Negro said. Got me? Because Satan knows you have a thirst and a hunger for gossip. But then when it comes to the word, you sit like a knot on the law and then want to bring the preacher in. So by the time you think the preacher ought to be winding it up, uh, you change how you respond. Who? You. Yes, ma'am. And Sister Joan, I, 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 I'm very careful when I'm teaching that y'all were in the service at a particular, well, you already know where it is. But anyway, do you remember that that preacher stopped in the middle of his sermon and, do you remember, and told that deacon, don't you ever tune me up? Yes, the preacher was up preaching. Um, Young man was pastoring in Dalton, Nats. It was Nats. And a certain deacon felt that it should have been time for him to bring the message in. <laughs> so the way, the way the preacher did was, the preacher said, you know, the deacon sitting there saying, yeah, mm -hmm. and did like that. And he stopped flat-footed right in the middle of his sermon and said, don't you do that. And I understood exactly what he meant. See, he wasn't going to become controlled by the response of the people on the pew. He was being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit hadn't told him to tune up nothing. Poor boy, y'all. Last one, last one. We, we dealt with hearing. We dealt with learning. Now you got to take what you know and put it in action. That's Following, following, and following is putting into action all you have learned and understood. Let's go to John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, if you love me, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. So spiritual growth hangs on the hinges of those three major elements. Hearing, learning, and following. Many folk can't follow Jesus because they haven't learned nothing. And they ain't learning nothing because they don't hear. Here's the problem. All three elements are necessary in a growing relationship with God. You don't grow in one area and not in the other one. Hearing, learning, following. Hearing, learning, following. Hearing, learning, following. Hearing, learning, following. You can get happy by yourself. I mean, you ever just skipped around the house in the Lord because you realize nobody could have brought you to the level you are at but him? And you look at yourself and go, ain't nowhere in the world. And you start thinking, that was a time I used to ask God for this. and ask. Now you're praying for peace of mind and joy and strengthen him where back in the day you just had a little list of stuff. Whew. I started five minutes after, so can I steal five minutes? All right, let's, let's end it. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 27, verse 11. Here's the point. I want you to understand that spiritual growth is always dependent 
on our vital connection to God. If you ain't connected right, you ain't going to grow right. Let me take you. When its bowls are withered, they will be broken off. The women come and set them on fire. For it is a people of no understanding. In Isaiah chapter 27, all the way down to verse 13, Isaiah compares the state of Israel's spiritual life to trees. He talks about dead branches that are broken off and used to make fires. The issue is that trees from a scriptural perspective, were looked at or dealt with to represent spiritual life. Okay? Now here's the point. The trunk is the source or channel of strength from God. I didn't say the big branches, the pretty leaves, I said the trunk. That ought to tell you something about your foundation. As a believer, when your foundation isn't right, it's easy to fall over. You got to get, and this is the part that annoys me because people don't have a thirst to be built right. And then they want, they want to grow and develop and then can't figure out why did this happen? Because your foundation's messed up. See, when your foundation is right, Satan can mess with your leaves. But you got sense of them. No, they're coming back. See, am I, does everybody understand what I'm saying? See, he can, he can cut branches. He can take leaves. He can remove fruit. But he can't mess with your roots. And you, you might be blooming, blossoming, just all that. And all of a sudden, trouble comes. But if you ride it out, <laughs> you're going to sprout up again. You're going to pop right back up again. I promise you.